Okay guys, pour me a brandy, I feel that name, says, not me, but my brother, and not Deep Sea, sorry. He was 18, part of the dive club at his school. They went on a diving trip. The crew that handled the dive counted heads wrong, and halfway through the dive, the boat went back to shore without them. So, there were two kilometers from shore with their only option to swim back. There were about five of them, two girls, three guys, all of them between 15 to 18 years old. About halfway through, one of the girls couldn't swim anymore and started crying. My brother, along with another guy, swam with her, dragging her along, making sure she didn't drown. Everyone made it out okay. Worst part, school tried to hide it and had the audacity to suspend my brother from school for catching him with a beer while on the trip. Needless to say, they were in deep shit when it came out. Not exactly sure what happened though. Um, wow, how on earth do you possibly count heads so horrifically wrong that you miss five entire people? Five whole people. I could understand, well I can't really because you should be counting properly, but I could understand one, but five entire people that you left two kilometers into the ocean? Not cool, man. Not cool. And this guy deserves a beer after saving somebody's life, frankly. Okay, so long story short, some divers came up from an extremely deep dive at an oil drilling rig, and somebody f the decompression procedure and opened the door while the chamber was still pressurized at depth. The four divers were instantly killed, and the one nearest the door literally exploded, and they found bits of his body all over the oil rig. Oh my gosh. So next time somebody tells you that people don't explode in decompression chambers like you see in the movies, tell them they're wrong. Oh my gosh, he blew up? So let me just read that one more time. And somebody f***ed up the decompression procedure and opened the door while the chamber was still pressurized at depth. I don't really understand the whole pressurized procedures or, or how deep sea diving works. Obviously I'm not a deep sea diver, frankly I'm very scared of deep sea diving. But the whole pressure thing, that explodes somebody? That's insane, man. That is, that is insane. Four divers were killed. That is true to this title of this video. Unsettling. Yeah, I, I don't like that image, man. Not my story, but my parents. They like to scuba dive when traveling and have gone several times over the years. Once they visited Mexico and went diving there before I was born. I'm not sure where they were exactly, but my mom was slightly lower down than my dad and looking at the ocean floor. He was looking up and around. My mom had on a gold necklace that was floating in the water around her. It was a sunny day and a fairly shallow dive, so it was sparkling. From my mom's POV, she was going along having a grand old time, looking at the sea critters below, when suddenly my dad grabbed her and started frantically shaking her arm to get her attention. She looked up and a barracuda was directly in front of her, closer than was comfortable and staring intently, scary teeth on full display. It was focused on the shiny necklace and was just hovering there, transfixed. She slowly moved up her hand to cover the necklace and they slowly and calmly moved away from it and it took off without bothering them anymore, but still pretty unsettling and taught my mom to be a little bit more aware of her surroundings when diving. No kidding, that would be super scary, man. A whole barracuda, like those things with the teeth, they are, they are definitely dangerous. Like, and you're like, you're in the ocean. Like, you are going to lose to this freaking barracuda if it decides to go after you. Is barracudas, like, do they, are they attracted to shiny things? I'm not sure if they are, but comment down below, because clearly that one was, and it had to do with the necklace. But I wasn't, I wasn't aware if that was a characteristic of barracudas, but maybe uh, don't go in there with a the necklace anymore, my friend. Okay, so my biology teacher told us that she was once swimming in the south of the Philippines because she was trying to find an elusive seahorse, and she went quite deep at night when there are more active and she got attacked by a shark and her team got out fast. The next day they found a turtle that was bitten in half, shell included, that was pretty big and it's supposedly the last time she went diving in that area. A whole turtle bit in half, the shell included? That's insane. If that's a shark, like well obviously it had to have been a shark, that is insane. Granted, I, I do understand why you were going uh, going diving. Like, I've always thought that seahorses are like some of the coolest animals. Like, literally a horse in the sea, and there's these little tiny guys, you know, and they're so beautiful and their tails and everything. I'm not willing to risk my life over it, but um, but yeah, seahorses are pretty cool, guys.
Okay, not my story, but my dad's. He was just telling me about this last night. In order to get his diving certification, he needed to complete three dives in open water. During the second test, remember this is only the second time he's ever been scuba diving in open water, there had been a massive storm, so the water off of New Jersey was pitch black, even during the day. They couldn't see anything at all, not even the hand of the instructor guiding him to the bottom. He didn't feel the bottom until he hit it with his face. To complete the test, they had to reach the ocean floor, take off their masks, and clear it by blowing air into it, then put it back on and go back to the surface. He did the mask test fine, not that the instructor could tell, and they all went up to the surface. He said at one point he couldn't tell which direction was up, but when they all finally hit the surface, there was a massive ship coming through the channel directly at them. The instructor screamed, swim, and they all had to bust to try and avoid the ship. Dad ended up getting whacked by the side of the ship, but otherwise fine. I just can't imagine coming up from a pitch black hell's cape to come face to face with a massive ship about to kill you. Me too, man. I've always been okay with the idea of skydiving. Like that to me seems really cool, but deep sea diving? I don't know, man. Something about that just trips me out. Like, like there is so much stuff down there and like pitch black, there's boats, they can't see you. All of it just seems way too dangerous for me, man. Like I, I'm honestly, I'm gonna stick to skydiving or doing something else. If I really want to thrill, deep sea diving, it's off the table for this guy. Diving the day before a hurricane on a small South Pacific island. Out of nowhere, a black and white sea snake, venomous, wrapped itself around my arm. Oh my gosh. Apparently this happens from time to time before major storms. They can sense and look for things that are heading towards the shore so that they don't have to put in so much effort to get out of the sea. As soon as I was in the shallows, it uncurled and headed up the beach where it hid under a breadfruit tree. I thought I was going to get bitten to death by a snake at sea. Turns out I was just a taxi for a very calm but rather rushed reptile. You know what? Kudos to you, reptile. That's cool. You know, it's like if you want a taxi on me, I'm all good, man. Like you can taxi on me. Just don't bite me. Don't kill me, you know, like you don't want to kill your taxi driver. He's taking you somewhere. He's being nice, right? And that's exactly what the snake did. He, he curled on, he, he took his ride, and then he went on his separate way. And for that, it's like, okay, respect, man. Taxi on me all you need. I got the bends once. I was careful, followed my charts and my computer, had appropriate depths and surface time, but I didn't drink enough water, so I was all out of whack. Felt fine until I got home, mild headache. Then I woke up, and it was just pain in my left arm elbows, fingers, couldn't even bend them without bad pain. My headache was intense and I was so dizzy. Called my older, more experienced dive buddy and I got rushed to the hospital. Doc got me hooked up in fluids, checked my dive logs while the decompression chamber was set up, and then got me in there with a nurse. Eight hours in a tube, about the length of a car, but as wide as maybe a double bed. I was on oxygen and hooked up to an IV and it was so loud with all the air rushing in. As soon as I got to depth, the pain vanished. It was crazy. I'm fine now, obviously, but I wasn't allowed to dive for a month, which sucked. But hey, the dives were pretty great. Again, this is another reason why I am never going deep sea diving, guys. Like the, the whole, like the bends, I don't even understand. Obviously, if I was gonna be a deep sea diver, I would need to look into this some more. But like the idea of coming up too quickly or like, oh, you didn't drink enough water today, so like now you're just freaking messed up. I hate it. It's, it's all so scary to me. Honestly, I didn't realize how much I didn't wanna go deep sea diving until this video, because I am unsettled. Free dove to about 160 feet in Dean's Blue Hole in the Bahamas. It's where a lot of the free diving world records are set. Super neat place, Google a picture. Okay, I will after this. Anyway, I'd never really been past 100 feet free diving, but this was the perfect place to do it. No current, there's ropes to keep you straight and allow a slight pull back up, well, that's good. Scary part is that you become pretty strongly negatively buoyant after like 60 feet. So you're basically hauling ass down while doing nothing and using very little air. So I'm dazed out a bit, feeling good and counting the lines that mark depth and all of a sudden feel pressure like my trachea is gonna collapse and wake up and realize I've counted to the line that's around 160 feet or so. Very scary moment because I wasn't sure if my body could take the depth or if I had gone too far and wouldn't have enough air to get back up, which is a much slower and more air intensive process. Holy man. 
that's so scary. Like that is the one time, dude. If you like, you cannot mess up your counting. It's like we we have got to make sure every single foot is accounted for here. You just magically appeared at the 160 feet range. No, thank you, man. No, thank you. I'll, if I'm ever diving, it's gonna be like. 15 feet, max. We are not going any further than that, guys. I wear contacts, so getting water in my mask is extra bad as I can't open my eyes underwater. Shortly after being told about a shark colliding with my friend from behind and removing his mask, I'm pretty scared about this, in brackets, not sharks in general, and I see a shark heading for me. They are curious, they often shoulder bump you as they turn at the last second, but she wasn't changing course. I stayed calm and still as long as I could and at the last second before she hit my mask, I ducked. Except instead of ducking under, I just head butted her right in the nose. Oh no. Everyone saw and thinks it was the funniest thing ever. I may be the only person alive who head butted an 11 foot shark in the nose, but it was because I was scared she would take my goggles off. Yo, everybody saw that? Every, so he was diving with other people, and everyone's like, ha ha, like, this shark, it's gonna come get you right now, man. Like, you just headbutted a shark. Like, what if it ate him, dude? Like, am I the only person who's actively nervous about this? Like, what if it literally, like, or like it headbutted him so bad, he's concussed now, like, he can't breathe properly, he's like falling into the ocean. The deep sea divers are crazy, man. This is nuts. This is a community of crazies. Anyways, folks, there you have it. That was unsettling stories from deep sea divers. Obviously, I will never be a deep sea diver because I don't think I can handle it. I'm pretty unsettled. Let me know if you're a deep sea diver. I do want to know that. And also, thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you next time. <laughs> Holy moly. All right. And then it looks like we got a quotation right there after that, but... Okay, so my biology teacher told us that she was... The next day they found a turtle that was bitten and... Oh my gosh. Nuts, it's a community of crazies. <laughs> Although we do not endorse underage drinking, I, I should say that.